And God asks us to do the impossible. Mark chapter 7, beginning at verse 5, we'll read through verse 13. I read tonight from the King James, and the word of the Lord reads, Then the Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why walk not thy disciples according to the tradition of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? He answered and said unto them, Well hath Esaias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honoreth me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. Howbeit in vain do they worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. For laying aside the commandment of God, ye hold the tradition of men as the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. And he said unto them, Full well ye reject the commandment of God, that ye may keep your own tradition. For Moses said, Honor thy father and thy mother, and whoso curseth father or mother, let him die the death. But ye say, if a man shall say to his father or his mother, it is Corban, that is to say, a gift, by whatsoever thou mightest be profited by me, he shall be free. And ye suffer him no more to do aught for his father or his mother, making the word of God of none effect through your tradition, which ye have delivered, and many such like things do ye. Master, we thank you, God, for this evening. Lord, this is an important message for this hour and this time. There are so many people affected by the subject matter that we're about to delve into. And Master, if ever I've needed the quickening of the Holy Ghost, I need it now. God, touch my spirit this hour that I might deliver this word, Lord, that I might do so in a manner that's consistent with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God, let your presence rest upon every word that the hearer might know that this is not merely the opinion or the ideas of Charles Morrow, but God, this is a word from heaven. Master, in the name of Jesus tonight, we just ask that your anointing, your presence, your power would rest heavily upon this message. God, that everyone who hears it, both in this building, those that would hear it by tape, might be touched and moved and challenged and changed. Lord, that they might be bettered for having heard it. We ask all this tonight in none other than the lovely, wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God and amen. You may be seated. When God asks us to do the impossible... The Lord is talking to the Pharisees and scribes, and he points out to them the fact that they enjoy setting aside the commandment of God and creating traditions of their own. I will try real hard tonight to, to get this message in my 45-minute time frame. So I'm going to try and get right to the meat of it as quickly as I can. You know, there are a lot of churches tonight that find it very easy to see what the Word of God says and then set it aside, and then they have their own little tradition relative to that that they'll stick with, and they'll have their own little tradition relative to that that they'll teach, and they'll have their own little tradition relative to that that they will put upon the people of God and expect the people of God to follow after. And yet, in reality, their little tradition hasn't got a thing in the bloody world to do with what God says to do. Hasn't got a thing in the world to do with it. I want you to know tonight that the Lord used as an example to the scribes and Pharisees the commandment that God gave that children were to honor their father and their mother. For the commandments were given, and in the commandments it says, Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the earth. I want you to understand the Lord went on to explain that these scribes and Pharisees had kind of shortcutted this commandment. And they said to the youth, or to the offspring, when your parents are old and they need to be cared for and they need to be 
sought after and they need someone to take care of them and to make sure that their needs are met. Rather than keeping the commandment of God which is given honor thy father and thy mother, instead you scribes and Pharisees have come along and suggested that if someone comes along and hands them a check and says, here, Ma, this ought to help you for a while, and then they disappear, and they no longer are there for their mom, or they're no longer there for their dad, that they're excused, and that they have no further responsibility to that parent. That's what the scribes and Pharisees were teaching. And the Lord said, but you know what? That's not what the commandment said. The commandment said, Honor thy father and thy mother. And I've got news for you tonight. If you think I'm going to preach it the way you, you think it sounds, guess again. Wait until you hear what God has to say from this. There was within the law of God a provision for parents. God knew well that not all parents do a superb or even an adequate job of raising their children. And for this reason it was written into the law that children were to honor their father and their mother. God would not have to have written this into the law if all parents were good parents. Do you hear what I'm telling you today? Because most children tend, when they have good parents, they tend to honor their parents. Amen. But see, because the problem exists in a world of flesh and blood and humanity, that a lot of parents are failing, and a lot of parents aren't perfect, and they're not just exactly what they might ought to have been while they were raising their children. It was for this reason that God had to include a clause in the Ten Commandments, honor thy father and thy mother. Mm. In Exodus 20 and 12, the commandment is, Given, honor thy father and thy mother, that th thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. Parents have often used this scripture passage as a weapon or as a means of beating their children into a state of submission and obedience. But this was not the intent of this command. Rather, this command was intended, listen carefully now, for adult children, not for little children, adult children who had already been raised. It was intended to promote goodwill between parents and children who may well have had less than a positive upbringing experience. The truth today is still this. All the commandments of God are wrapped up in this one. Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. The Lord was not at all making up a new commandment in Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. He was quoting an old one. It's found in Leviticus 19 and 18. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the Lord. When we learn to recognize that first and foremost, our parents are also our neighbors. They, too, are human beings, just as we. They, too, are the creation of God, just as we. They, too, are subject to human failings and weaknesses, just as we. We must recognize that our responsibility toward our parents is nothing less nor anything more than God expects of us in terms of our behavior toward and our interaction with any human being on this planet. Because even though they're our parents, they're still our neighbor. And we're supposed to love our neighbor as ourselves. 
Matthew 12, verses 46 through 50, While he yet talked to the people, behold, his mother and his brethren stood without, desiring to speak with him. Then one said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brethren stand without, desiring to speak with thee. But he answered and said unto him that told him, Who is my mother? And who are my brethren? And he stretched forth his hand toward his disciples and said, Behold my mother and my brethren, for whosoever shall do the will of my Father which is in heaven, the same is my brother, my sister, and mother. Amen. The Lord was saying, if they're even trying to do the right thing, if they're even trying to do what God would have them to do, as misguided and as messed up as they may be, we need to recognize that our obligation toward them is the same obligation we have toward any believer in the pew or any saint in God's sanctuary. I know for myself personally, I know I have curbed what I might like to have said to certain aunts many times to my grandmother, <laughs> sometimes to mom. <laughs> I've curbed what I wanted to say. Why? Because of the impact it might have on them spiritually. Because I recognize that first and foremost, my obligation to them is as a brother or sister in Christ. You hear me tonight? This is powerful stuff. I can't say anything that would cause them to backslide. I can't say anything that would cause them to lose hope. I can't say anything that would cause it. You know, there are so many times you want to call somebody on being a hypocrite. There are so many times you want to go, wait, you ain't doing that. But you see, you can't do that. Well, but my mother, your mother, that's right, but your mother's also your sister. Remember what Jesus said? If they're even trying to do the will of God, then they're my mother, they're my brethren, they're my sisters, they're my brothers. And tonight the same stands true for you and I today. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 through 48, the Word of God declares, Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, Love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans do the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do you more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect or mature, grown up, even as your Father, which is in heaven, is perfect. What's the title of my message? When God asks us to do the impossible. Think about that list he just gave us in Matthew chapter 5. Love your neighbor. He said, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Good, do good to them that hate you. Pray for them which despitefully use you. Those are some pretty impossible things to do, aren't they? When God asks us, sometimes God appears to be asking us to do that which is seemingly impossible. But God's no fool. He knows the heartache and the heartbreak that come with an abusive childhood. He knows the anguish that accompanies neglect. He knows the loneliness of abandonment. He knows the pain of hunger. In short tonight, he knows what we feel and how we feel when our parents have not done their job exactly as they should. But still, we have an obligation toward them. The question tonight is, what exactly is that obligation? In truth, not what a lot of churches get up and preach it as being, but what is the truth of our obligation? Not according to the dictates and mandates of man-made tradition and protocol, but according to, to God's divine plan for humanity. How many preachers tonight will get up in their pulpits and look out into a sea of faces while demanding that God's Word requires them to honor their father and mother? And according to them, honor means respect, admire, 
reverence. But these same preachers will also demand that wives love their husbands and be obedient to them. They will tell us that we are to do these things. Honor our parents, love and obey our husbands. And all the while, they will act as though the parents and the husbands do not first have an obligation before God to do right by their children and to do right by their spouse before they can even begin to expect anything from them. Mother, you know I'm telling the truth. How many preachers get up and they just preach? Honor your father and mother. And you're just you're looking at an abusive man. You're looking at a man who's horrible to live with. And they're telling you, honor him. How in the name of God do you honor something like that? Is that what God is actually, is God actually asking us to admire and respect and appreciate? And look up to someone like that. No, that's stupid. How do you tell a child today who has been molested by his or her father that he or she is to respect and reverence the father? How do you tell the offspring of a verbally, physically, or mentally abusive parent that God expects them to, quote, honor that parent? How can one expect a child to admire the drunken father who returns home late at night only to beat his wife bloody in a jealous, drunken rage. This is the ultimate in injustice in the mind of a child who has been mistreated and abused. This is the final insult in the hearing of a child who has already been forced to surrender to the most degrading and humiliating of conduct. This is in direct contradiction to justice and equity for anyone who has ever had to witness abuse that was brought on without provocation or cause. The truth today, my friend, is this. God does not expect the abused to respect their abuser. Nor does he expect the tormented to reverence and revere their tormentor, holding them up in the highest esteem. No, he does not expect the child who lived through hell growing up to admire and appreciate the ones who carried them there in a handbasket. No, according to our primary text today, we learn that it is in our adult years, listen to this, this is powerful tonight. It is in our adult years that God expects us to grow and mature to such a place in our own lives that we can grow up and learn to bring honor to our parents by behaving toward them and others in general in a manner that suggests we have been well bred. You follow me now? Boy, that boy was brought up right, as the old saying goes. To honor our father and mother is to bring them honor or to bring honor to the names they have given you by behaving like a respectable, decent, productive member of our human society. You can either act like a fool and let the world know you were raised like a pig in a barn, or you can act right and cause your family name, and parents in particular, to glean praises for attributes in your life that they probably didn't even have the slightest thing to do with. I see young ladies on Oprah who grew up with a mama who was a drug addict, a crack addict. And here's this girl had to raise her brothers and sisters because mom was strung out on crack all the time. And here she sits on the Oprah Winfrey show and she's dressed so pretty and she's got her legs crossed nicely and she's got her hands on her knees and she looks like just, just you'd have thought she was brought up in the best home that ever was. You know, thought she had the best parents that ever lived. You know, thought that somebody taught her how to conduct herself right from the very earliest of her childhood. And yet, in reality, she grew up in the bowels of hell. 
But today, as an adult, she's matured to the place where she's realized, Tommy, I can act right. I can carry myself right. And folks will think my dad and mom are the best dad and mom ever was. You hear me now? Or I can act like a fool and an idiot and let the world know my parents were less than wonderful parents. But God says, no, honor thy father and thy mother. Bring them honor. Bring honor that you can lay before them as an offering by reason of your conduct toward them as well as the rest of the world. By reason of the way you carry yourself, let their name and their memory be honored. I say, why do I treat my mom the way I treat my mom? Why do I, you know, try to take care of my mom the best way I know how and do the best by her that I can? Is it because mom was a five-star mom and she won all the awards and, you know, she was Donna Reed when I was growing up? No. But do you know why? You know why I do what I do? Because, Mother, I made up my mind that I'm going to honor you. And I'm going to do the best by you that I can do. Because it ain't about whether you are a good or bad parent. It's about whether or not I'm going to be a good or bad son. You hear me now? When I go to my grave, I'm going to know that I was a good son. My grandmother has said to me on several occasions, we were talking about different things, and I'd say, well, I had to help mom do this, or I had to do that for mom the other day, and blah, blah, blah. And grandma would say to me, honey, you will never regret that. One day, one day you'll be grateful that you did those things. She said, you'll never regret it. Because when you honor your parents, regardless of whether they're lovely and wonderful, whether they're, you know, uh, the beavers, or whether they're who they are, it doesn't matter, the cleavers, whatever their name is. It doesn't matter who they are. When you honor your father and mother, all you're doing is you're shining well on yourself. You're making yourself look good. And this is what God was telling his people. If you learn to honor your father and your mother, and if you live a life and carry yourself in a way that makes it look like you've had the best of bringing in town in the long run, you're the one who's going to benefit. Lord have mercy. Are you catching how wonderful this message is tonight? <clears throat> to honor our father and our mother is to bring them honor. Amen. I want you to know tonight that Aunt Dorothy loves to brag that it is obvious to her that Tommy was raised by two angelic parents who did everything right, never made a mistake, never spoke a cross word. It's obvious to her that he was raised right, she says. You can tell. <laughs> you can tell his folks raised him well by the way he acts, by the way he dresses, by the way he carries himself. Aunt Dorothy has said to me, but you know what? If you were to ask Tommy, he could give you a, a litany of things that his parents may not have done right at all. He could probably give you a list of things that left him feeling bruised and hurting, sometimes alone and very much afraid. But it's his choice today whether he wishes to live in the past or occupy the present? Will he today cause honor to be laid at their feet, his parents' feet, or will he cause dishonor by making himself a menace to society and a terror on humanity? The lessons tonight relative to forgiveness are not lost on our parents, nor are the mandates for forgiveness somehow excused relative to our parents. One need not respect or even love their parents to care for them properly in their old age. The Lord Jesus Christ, listen to this, folks. You want to hear a powerful thought. Listen to this. The Lord Jesus Christ looked down from Calvary's cross, and in effect, he declared, I forgive. 
He didn't say, I respect. He didn't say, I admire. He didn't even say, I love. He said, I forgive. Some of us need to look toward mom and dad and learn to say, I forgive. Doesn't matter if you can say, I love. Doesn't matter if you can say, I admire. Doesn't matter if you can say, I appreciate every decision you made and everything you did. But we've got to find it in our heart to say, I forgive. Amen? If the church would stop trying to shove love and respect and admiration down the throats of those of God's people who have had to endure hardness and survive abuse, perhaps then God's children could heal and not merely learn to suppress that which they really feel. But God is not a dishonest God tonight. He doesn't want us to mask what we feel. He does not want us to ignore our gaping wounds. But he wants us to learn to respond to abuse with tenderness and to torment with love. Chances are a million to one that the very reason that you and I may have known abuse in our childhood is simply because one or both of our parents were lacking in some of these things themselves. God wants to help us learn today to turn a negative into a positive. To make something glorious from that which is, at best, disgusting and vile. As I said a few moments ago, you know, I'm going to be the best son that I can be. Not because of the merits of my mother or my dad, but because I have vowed to God that I'm going to do my level best to be His best. He did His best for me when I was at my worst. Romans 5 and 8, But God commendeth His love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When I was at my worst, <laughs> the Lord did his best for me. God says, honor your father and your mother. He says, treat them and treat people in this life as though you had the best upbringing anybody could ever have. And when people say to you, Boy, your parents must be the best parents in the world. Why, oh, I wish I'd have been raised by your parents. Don't crush their thoughts by saying, Oh, no, my father was a weedy. Oh, honey, you wouldn't want to have been raised by my father. No, 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 no. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let them get praise that they didn't deserve. It's okay. You understand me tonight? Let them get some positive thoughts and some positive comments that they really didn't earn. That's okay. That's how we honor our father and our mother. Amen. You follow me tonight? And this is what God gave me, Mother. I'll tell you, this message has been brewing in my spirit for months. But I think it's so powerful. I really do. I believe it's powerful. And the Holy Ghost just spoke to me and said, all these preachers getting up in pulpits telling people what they're supposed to do. You're supposed to honor your father and your mother. And there are wounded, broken spirits sitting there saying, how in God's green earth can I, who can I honor an incestuous father? How can I honor a, an abusive mother? How can I honor this one who treats me this way or who treated me that way? And these preachers have set aside the commandment of God. Instead of taking what God's really trying to tell us to do, they set that aside and made it into something completely different. Well, you're supposed to love them. I don't care. If I had a nickel for every preacher I've ever heard say, you're supposed to love them. I don't care if they're hating you and hurting you and hitting you and blah, blah, blah. You're just supposed to love them anyhow and blah, blah, blah. And if you don't love them, you're not saved and blah, 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 blah. And I'm sitting there thinking, preacher, if you'd ever experienced it, you'd have a different opinion about it. Amen. You know what I'm talking about. And I'm not talking about 
I'm not talking about being hateful. It's not about hating. It's not about hating, but it's about being able to love when somebody's abusing you. That's a hard thing to do. And if you look at the example of Calvary, no, Jesus forgave. But honey, he said, I forgive, not I love. Amen. He didn't say, I love you. He said, I forgive you. When you're in the process of being abused, and you're in the process of being crucified, and you're in the process of going through all the hurt and all the pain, the most you can hope for is forgiveness and release. Amen. And if we can find that forgiveness, then, then, that's why mom says, well, we always talk about things certain things. I say, we don't have to. Because you know what? That was then that this is now. I'm not going to live in the past. I'm going to live in the now. I'm not worried about that. that. I know all about that. We were there, but we're not there anymore. We're in a different place. Let's enjoy where we are now instead of worrying about where we were then. You understand what I'm saying? Because that's, I'm not, cause there's no sense. I've wound up the hurts. I've cleaned up the wounds. And I said, I forgive. But you know, I tell people, when you say, I forgive, and then in the very next breath you say, now remember, <laughs> you haven't forgiven. Amen. You haven't forgiven. And I know my dear aunt loves to say, I forgive, but I don't forget. But you know what? <laughs> forgetting is a part of forgiveness. Amen. It's right. It's letting it go. That's the whole point of it. Because I'm going to tell you right now, it takes mental energy. It really does. To keep things in your brain. You know, our mind is like a computer. You can only store so much in there. And it takes a lot of energy to store up the negativities that we can't quite let go of. And I hear people talk about abusive husbands and abusive parents and all these things. And, and, and I say, honey, you've got to find a place of forgiveness. You've got to understand, yes, they're your mom and dad. Yes, they're the two human beings that brought you into this world. But you know what? They're flesh and blood just like you are. They're no more perfect than you are. They had no more, they no more had a book they could read that told them how to raise you when you were born than you did when I was born. So you've got to let all that go. You just gotta let it go. Just let it go. Let it go. Forget about it. Forget about it. Don't talk about it. Don't bring it up. Just let it go. Because if you'll do that, all of a sudden, you know what happens? And I know this is true in my own life. I can be in a room with my father. I can have a conversation with my dad. I was there for my my uh, grandfather's 90th birthday. And now I don't make a point of, you know, going out of my way to talk with my dad, and I don't I don't misrepresent that I do. But the idea is when I'm around him, I can tell you in all honesty, there's not a negative feeling that comes through my body. Seriously. There's not a negative feeling. I don't sit there and look at him like well, you dirty dog, you, you know, you this and that. And I, I, no, uh -uh. I know people who live like that, and it's horrible. And I've got news for you. I'm convinced of this today, and I believe it's the Holy Ghost Help me to understand some things. I honestly believe today that one of the premier causes of Alzheimer's is people not letting things I really believe that with all my heart. I, I don't know why, but this is something that the Lord spoke to me about a long time ago. That people who try so hard to remember every hurt and every pain and every struggle that they've ever had. And that's why I'm very afraid. That's why I'm very afraid for certain family members. Because they hold on to all that hurt. They hold on to all that negativity. It scares me because I think, Lord, I believe that's I believe that's a key to setting Alzheimer's in motion, and I don't want to see that happen to some of our family members who are inclined to doing that. You know. But anyway, tonight when God asks us to do the impossible, 
<laughs> love the enemy, pray for them which despitefully use you, but also when he says, honor your father and mother, sometimes that seems impossible, but it can be done. It can be done. Amen. Would you stand with me tonight? Amen. Amen. Praise God, praise God, praise God. <clears throat> I really, that message, the Lord had that brewing in me for for months and months and months. And I've been, I've been, Lord, when do I preach this? When do I preach it? When? And finally this weekend I felt the go ahead. And he told me, I want you to send this out because people need to hear this. A lot of people out there have been abused and been tormented and and they're told on one hand that they're supposed to love and respect and admire somebody, that they, how in the world can they love and respect them? That's not what God expects of them. He doesn't expect you to love, respect, and admire them. He expects you to treat them in such a manner that is consistent with forgiveness. And he expects you to live a life in such a manner that you bring honor to your parents. Amen. Bring honor to the name that they've given you. Master, we thank you tonight, Jesus, for this word that you've given us, God. We're so grateful, Lord, that the word of God is true. We're grateful tonight, God, that your spirit is residing in the midst of your people. Master, we just ask, God, that everybody that would hear this message tonight, those that hear it in this place, those that hear it by tape, Lord, let everyone that hears this message find a place of forgiveness and release in their heart and in their spirit, God, so that they might know the joys of living without the clutter, without all the negativity, without all the memories of bad times and bad things. Lord, help us tonight, Jesus, to release in Jesus' name. Help us, Lord, tonight to release all these things and place them in your hands. Oh, God, it happened so long ago. Why let it live today? Why let it live today? Let it die. Today's a new day. Master, in the name of Jesus, when you ask us to do what seems impossible, we know that we can do what you ask us to do because you never ask us to do what's impossible for us to do. You only ask us to do what's possible. And you've asked us to honor our father and our mother. And tonight, Lord, we know what this means. We know what it means in truth. Doesn't mean we have to love, admire them. Doesn't mean we have to sit there and act as though every decision they ever made was the right decision. But Lord, what we can do is we can live our lives in such a way that they'll receive high praise from people who know us for our conduct and the way we carry ourselves. Whether or not they've had anything to do with who we are today and how we carry ourselves, that's not important. But, Lord, we're going to bring honor to our father and our mother. Master, tonight we just thank you, God, for this message. We ask that you help us take it home, help us to meditate upon it. We ask it all tonight in the wonderful, lovely name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God and amen. You are dismissed tonight in Jesus' name. God bless you.